Rich Dad's Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The subtitle reads, What the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. If you're like me, then your parents might come from a rather poor to average background, and the financial plan, if they even have one, is based on the common save now, live once you retire, lay in the rich mindset. So it comes as no surprise they couldn't teach you a whole lot about making a substantial amount of money, because they didn't know, and they didn't know because their parents didn't teach them. Robert makes a great point about their education system not teaching us financial literacy and how to manage our wealth. We're taught, not to say conditioned, by our parents. And so if your parents had a rather strong opinion about money being the root of all evil and clipping coupons all day in order to save a few dollars being a good time investment, you are more likely to associate money and the ones making it with a negative sentiment and limit yourself to a mediocre financial situation or even lifelong poverty. This is part of the reason why you can have doctors or lawyers who got all the right degrees and certificates and still live life always depending on their next paycheck. Robert Kiyosaki offers us six profound lessons that he has concluded out of 30 years of learning from both his friend's rich dad and his biological poor dad by contrasting their views and mindsets. Lesson number one, the rich don't work for money. This is the concept of fear and desire. These two core emotions can prevent us from reaching financial independence. The fear of a missing paycheck, which could result in our inability to afford our monthly expenses. The fear of losing money keeps many of us entrenched in the devil's cycle that is the office cubicle. You work a lot of hours for a certain paycheck in order to maybe reach a promotion, so that you could work even longer hours to receive more money, but what happens for most is, as our salary grows, our living standards tend to adjust, thus growing our expenses. Now, going back to your former job would feel like a huge loss, even though you'd have more time to spend with your family. But they rarely ever see you, and they've gotten used to their new pair of sneakers, smartphones, and whatever else you can now afford to spoil them with. It's a total mess, and it can keep going forever, until you're on your deathbed, and your biggest regret is that you've been working way too much. Your biggest regret would be that you worked for money, instead of having money work for you. This devil's cycle is what's preventing them from evaluating investments and other sources of income. And how could they even find the energy to do so if their job drains them of all their energy? That is the fear part. The desire part is just as bad. As I mentioned, our expenses give us no other choice but to keep at it. We want to continue our fake Facebook and Instagram lifestyle that makes people miserable for not having the pretentious awesome life that we do. We have to stay popular and upload photos of us eating at expensive restaurants, documenting our beach vacations and wearing that Louis Vuitton bag. We feel the need to compete with each other in order to have a false sense of importance. Because believe it or not, we are not our bank account. We are not our job. Lesson 1 lets us understand the importance of seeing through this nonsense induced by fear and desire. It's hindering your success. Instead of living paycheck to paycheck like a slow laner, you want to create income sources for yourself that don't require your presence. Meaning income sources that grow and are profitable without you once you've set it up. Check out my summary on the Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco, where I clarify this. Lesson number two, learning financial literacy. Financial literacy equals financial independence. You study how to manage your finances most effectively considering the differences in cash flow for various income levels. The rich live well off of their investments returns. Their stocks and bonds cover any expenses they might have, whereas the poor use up most of their paycheck to keep themselves from drowning. In order to become wealthy, one must work on creating profitable assets instead of working towards a higher salary. You realize you can't depend on your paycheck alone and use any time window you have to work on creating assets. Lesson number three, mind your own business. Little wordplay here because it's meant literally. Let me ask you this question. What if you get fired tomorrow and the paycheck you and your family relies on doesn't come? Now some of you are going to say, oh, I'm good. I know plenty of people who want me to work for them. And that's great. But not all of us are that connected and so having those assets in place that you've built minding your own business working after hours to create more wealth for yourself could not only dampen but even prevent the fall of you losing your job. Of course, you might be the best employee in the world. But if the 40 laws of power have taught us anything, you cannot hope for mutual loyalty from any profit above all businessmen, which are quite numerous at the top. They'll saw you off the minute they think you may interfere with their careers or the success of their business even if you're quote-unquote doing the right thing. Lesson number four, the history and the power of corporation. By creating a personal corporation, the rich avoid many of the personal taxes the poor have to deal with through corporate exemption. They can pay taxes after they've paid for the expenses of their business, whereas it's the other way around for the regular employee. And we'll dive deeper into this and the concept of assets and liabilities within part two. Lesson number five, the rich invent money. Saving at the bank might seem secure, but often the savings rates are below the rate of inflation, so it's better to have our money circulating, to invest it. 
In order to get rich, you need both financial literacy and boldness. I get pissed off when people talk to me about the risks of entrepreneurship. You take calculated risks. You test and see if there's a market or an audience for your product or service. It's not like you just order 20,000 boxes of a new product that you created with capital you borrowed from friends and family. No one ends up buying it and now you're stacking those boxes in the keller. There's always the smart way of doing things. Unfortunately, when talking about the subject of money with most people, they don't see that. But what else would you expect checking their bank accounts? I would rather a self-made millionaire told me how to make money than a highly opinionated but very qualified co-worker who's not only been stuck at the same job for 20 years, but sees that as an attribute. Lesson number six, work to learn. Here's why I think lots of young people are currently making a mistake believing the way to riches is to have an idea, crowdfund it with the right formula, raise a lot of money from unsuspecting people and then it just happens for them. The thing is, it's great to get that education first, then get into a company that sees your potential because you're working as hard as you can and really using that time in order to learn. Ask questions, get into programs and language classes that are offered for free. Some corporations really do invest in you if you're doing a great job. Guess what I did in my first two years in the office? I immediately befriended everyone and had such a great co-worker relationship with the sales managers of all departments that they loved to answer all my questions and teach me their most valuable insights. Two of them became my mentors because they saw me as an asset. Investing in me now would pay dividends with time as I would become a very young junior sales manager acquiring new clients that they could take the praise for. That's the game. I joined them for lunch and asked them questions, not like I was interviewing them, but merely talking as friends. And occasionally, I would feed their narcissism by acknowledging their success. I made that time count, especially when I was an intern, when they have more patience with you. You're in this long term. You might hate your job right now and work on getting out of there. If so, I congratulate you for doing something about it. But on top of that, use that time to learn as much as you can. Not only do I recommend you read this book five times this year, chances are you've got children who depend on your teaching them how the world works and a big part of that is understanding money. I wish I would have had a father to teach me anything valuable other than being a prime example for how not to turn out. So please do yourselves and your children a favor and buy a copy of this book. You'll be helping young potential thought leaders develop such a strong mindset surrounding money that they will be better off financially for their whole life. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe for my upcoming animated summaries of Think and Grow Rich, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, and The Richest Man in Babylon. Talk to you soon.